Good evening, and may the Lord be with us as we pray together. I'm privileged to be with you tonight, and uh, I would ask you to have a, a moment of prayer in your hearts. Look, brethren, that's a blessing around. Shall we have it or shall we miss it? Take a moment of prayer. Only the Lord Jesus can give us what he really wants to give. Thank you. Christ in all in the future. It's the wonderful blessing that the Lord gave us and he will do it, he'll fulfill it. The scripture reading for tonight is the wonderful verse at the end of the Bible. I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them that shall be in the future god in everything christ all and christ in all but the question is when is that future let's try to consider a little bit how was in the beginning but it should be somehow similar in the beginning god is love it's yahweh i am he never changes he was and he is and will be forever and because of his love he created so many wonderful uh, miracles in his universe and he created men what's important for us is that we have been created in his likeness or in his image what does it mean for you it's not only outside appearance which was wonderful to be like him yeah it's not as we are brethren i i cannot imagine how terrible have we degenerated in these six thousand years but how was adam and eve in the beginning it's not only outside looking symmetrical perfectly um, healthy brilliant wonderful it was a wonderful thing for god to when created man to make his mind the glory of God is revealed in the creation of man and is in it's his redemption as well. God created man that every faculty might be the faculty of the divine mind. In his likeness and his image, what does it mean? Every faculty of human mind, of Adam's mind, of Eve's mind, was supposed to be a reflection of God's mind. That's, that means Christ in you. That means Christ in all. Everything. There was it, it, for God himself was extraordinary, he says. was a wonderful thing for God when he did the, the mind of humans. And when he said in the, in the last verse of the first chapter in Genesis, he says, when he looked upon everything, they was so good they were so good it says he was pleased with what he did that means the experiment was wonderful not only was yeah we may try to copy there, there are some brands yeah some factories trying to copy watches or copy stuff of other but not every time they manage to do it how to copy yourself when you are an infinite god god made a replica of himself in other words i cannot I cannot explain you take the word inspired and beside of that he gave a wonderful gift that means his presence I will be with you he was happy to meet every day with his beloved children in order to maintain that uh, um, that reflection of his traits of character of his abilities of his uh, faculties in the heart and in the mind of the beloved family i will be certainly with you this is life this was life given to adam and eve this is life eternal to know him in other words to know how he thinks how he feels how he imagines 
Imagine meeting the Creator. I have a too small brain to grasp that reality. How, was, how were the, those encounters between the Holy Fair and their beloved Eternal Father? And then, the, the, as we st uh, studied yesterday in the Sabbath school, the meetings with the, with the angels, explaining things. And, and uh, they were supposed to grow, to grow in this relationship, to grow in this connection, extraordinary connection, which as a metaphor we call Christ in you, the hope of glory, because you are in him. Your mind in his mind, his mind in your mind, his heart in your heart. That's heaven. Only an eternal and a loving God as we have could imagine such things. And I pray to the Lord as we, you, you already did, that he may impress our hearts with his truth, with that dimension. Brethren, what does it mean to, to be religious? Well, to be a believer, to be Adventist, that means to wait for him as something regarding of this connection. It says, I in them, that was the idea. It's not out of sermon of Jesus because it looks like we humans, we cannot grasp that. There was a talk between the son and the father. I in them, father, help me to do that for them. They are so corrupted, but, but we'll do it. As thou in me, which is huge, is infinite. Who, he who saw me saw the Father. As you are in me, says the Lord Jesus, may I be in them. And then a uh, united people, a united church, and then heaven on earth, and then your neighbors, and your clients, and your friends, and your uh, colleagues in the university will say, I want that too. That's a promise in Isaiah. I want that. Brethren, that's the promise of God. It's about the prayer of the Lord Jesus. How close this relationship, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in them, that they may also be one in us as your Father are in me. From the eternal ages, it was God's purpose that every faculty, sorry, not every faculty, every being, every created being, from the bright and holy seraph to men, should be a temple for the indwelling of the Creator. This is the life eternal. This is the religion of God, this biblical religion. I don't, don't necessarily insist which is the name of that church of God because not the name makes the church to be his. It's this. It says each one of the believers, each one of the created beings should be a temple for the indwelling of Christ the Lord by his spirit, of the Father by his spirit. So said that sin, sin got into and the whole plan was destroyed, was terminated. Satan was happy, if he can, yeah, with the thing that he achieved. But thank the Lord that the plan resisted. The plan was reloaded. And uh, we thank the Lord that was that reserve, that, that how say, that, other aspect of the eternal plan of God to be put in practice. And we know at the east of Jerusalem was risen a cross. And then God himself made flesh, prayed for us, brethren, sisters, children, young people, prayed for, for you and for me. Because he gave, he, he loved us we remember yesterday the word of God, the best verse in the Bible for eternity. So much he loved us that he gave. What did he give? He gave his son to your heart, to my heart, to become human as we are, to 
accept on himself the human fallen sinful, says the word nature, on himself, never took as his. He had to crucify that in order to show us what does it mean. God in the flesh. A new, the indwelling of the creator was possible after so many, yeah, 4,000 years was a fact, was a reality. That's salvation. And we praise the Lord together for that. Giving, not only for 33 years and a half, but giving for eternity to remain one of us with the huge exception that he never touched sin, not at least in his mind for one second. Perfect, pure, undefiled, yet having on himself our nature. And showing us what does it mean? Divinity with humanity together, victorious with the victory of God himself. Now, our part. How should we do to, to have that experience, the same experience? It says, okay, I made it already. It's 2,000 years ago. It's for you. I already signed the documents for you. You're already welcome in heaven, but you have a part. What do you say? My son, my daughter, my young fellow, my younger brother, to the young people here present, or later to follow this presentation, would you be happy to give your positive answer to this extended, wounded hand of the, of the Lord? Give me your heart. And let's make harmony between your thoughts and your ways and my thoughts and my ways. Between your mind and my mind. Between your heart and my heart. Would you? I'll change it. I'll repair it. I'll do the transformation for you because you cannot. But you have to say your answer. That's our part in salvation. It's important. It's so little, but so important. May the Lord help us to have it, to do it. And when he's speaking about heart, what does he mean? It says the word of God. When Jesus speaks about the new heart, he means our mind, the life, the whole being. To have a change of heart is to withdraw the affections from the world and to fasten them on Christ. To have a new heart is to have a new mind, new purposes, new motives. That's about the mind. And it's beautiful for the Lord. When he says, okay, I want you to be my, my children. And then we go to him, uh, John 6. And the Lord, what should we do? You remember, John 6. They came to Jesus exactly with this question. What should we do in order to fulfill the works of God? And the answer was, the work, the work of God for you is to believe. It's about the battle in our minds. To believe that I'm coming in your heart with all my solutions. Cannot Satan invent so many problems that so many can the Lord Jesus solve? Uh, sorry with my English, yeah? More solution than the problems possible invented by, by the enemy. That's the idea. The new mind, the new feelings, the new understandings, the new affections. You reach to reject what you have loved previously, before, and to now love things that you, was, you were hating before. That's the, the changing that only the Lord can write into our hearts and to our minds. I in them, through this coming of the Lord, through this incarnation of the Son of God, the, pro the purpose of heaven was fulfilled. God dwells in humanity and through saving grace, the heart of man becomes again his temple. If we have these brethren, then the Lord can come. Just next second, next minute, next day, who cares? We don't know what will be with our, with our earth. We don't know about the important visit that the American Congress is expecting in a few weeks. 
We don't know about the decisions that the big people, great people of this world will take about this planet. We don't know how quick this earth is going to come to an end. But we don't care if we have him with us dwelling in our hearts, not dwelling only with us in the same house, it's in the same room. It says the Lord, John 16, if somebody loves me and comes along with me, that means does my commandment, yeah, obeys my commandments. It says, my father loves him. And we, that means Christ and the father, we shall come down and will shame, we shall make our abode with him, to stay with us in the same room, but no, to, say, to stay with us inside. In, yeah, indwelling, it's an indwelling of the creator. To have him so close, to see him as he is, to know him as life eternal. Apostle Paul grasped the idea from the same gospel of the Lord Jesus, John 17, 3. Yeah? The life eternal, to see him. I'm seeing him now, but it's a bit shadowed. But one day, I'll see him face to face. It says, Christ in all in the future. When will be that day? When will be that day? That's a contradiction, a Apparently, that's a contradiction in the Bible. See, uh, see these two verses. Seek my face, says the Lord, to your own heart. And on the other hand, hand, Exodus 33, men cannot see me and live. Yeah, cannot. But still, that's the plan of God, to see him face to face. When, brethren? Look into the history. And the Lord spake unto Moses face to face. As a man speaks with his friend, Moses did not know that his skin of his face was shining because he had been talking with God. Okay, ours does not. Our face is not shining. That's the reason. But, but Moses... Although that the Lord says, you cannot see, he was still talking face to face. Impossible things to be happening in our experience. To have him, to know him, his thinking, his principle, his reasons, his motives. And to be so nice that you cannot live without that. And little by little, from glory to glory, to copy that experience. The good news is that Moses already in his life was experienced this. That means tomorrow already started from now. Future is already started. Changed in his image. Let's read anew. Beholding him as by open faces, as in a glass, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory even by the Spirit of the Lord, changed in His likeness. We read in the beginning, yeah, humans were made in His likeness, and then we lost God. We have chosen the enemy. Then we turn ourselves like Him. It's terrible for the Lord to seek, to see, sorry, to see humanity as we are today. We don't know. Because we look with our human eyes and we don't, yeah, we do, don't realize. But he is looking to us with such a constraint of heart. His beloved children. Can you imagine to have a child and to suffer tremendously, I don't know what, accidents or fires. And, and to be like something terrible. And to, to have your tears and your breaking heart about him. But the good news Having you as Christ himself, next to him as the child, the child is changing itself. 
We are the children. We are to become like him anew in his likeness from a stage to another, from another to another by his grace, by his um, Holy Spirit from glory to glory. In other words, when we submit ourselves to, to him, what doesn't it change from glory to glory? That's wonderful. The heart is united with his heart. The will is merged in his will. The mind, you remember, yeah? We are in the likeness of God created. And you now, the mind becomes one with his mind. The thoughts are brought in captivity to him. We live, what do we live? His life. And his life is eternal. We live and it's a present, ti present time. It's present it's not in the future. It says Christ in you in the future. The future already started. We live humbly but happily his life. We are not. It says I was crucified but I live. Not me. Instead of that, the Lord living in me. And everything, whatever I'm doing, whatever I'm thinking, I'm doing in believing, in the faith in him who loved me so much. I, I thank the Lord. And I ask him to do this miracle for me too. And for my kids. And for my friends. The young, young people that are yeah, accepting me around them. And for all of us to be from, from, El, from what we are. To be made as himself adjusting, putting in harmony a new tuning to make the perfect unity as you, Father, are in me so that I might be in them, so that the world would understand. Oh, that's Christianism. There was a legend about uh, the ruler in India. Yeah, it's one of... Uh, uh, that family is continuing yeah, from generation to generation in the leadership of that country. The legend said that the man thought to, became, to become a Christian, but he gave up because he couldn't reconcile such a promise of God with the reality of Christianism in Europe. World wars, terrible. Christians fighting to death. Christians. Yeah. That's the shame on the face of the Lord Jesus. And it's about you and it's about me. How many times we did the same. But thank the Lord that's still possible. If we submit ourselves willingly, positively, Lord, you know me. He's my heart. It's broken. It's terminated almost. Take it and do what, what you want to do with it. At the end will be this fantastic reality. We will live his life, starting with what we think, what we understand, what we love, and continuing with what we do. But in this sequence, not the other way around. This is what it means to be clothed in the garment of his righteousness, to have his mind, his thoughts, his will, yeah? The metaphor, clothed. What does it mean, clothed? Yeah. Having him means being as he is. Being transformed, that means righteous. Fit for heaven. What do we have to do? What do we have to be? It's to believe that you are a son of God, to accept him, to believe that he's in his heart, to accept that he's all in all, and then the result will be the miracles around. Jesus said, bigger, greater things you will do comparing with mine if you accept me in your heart. It's extraordinary. He himself couldn't do anything because he, he became a man, he accepted to become a man, a son of man, I cannot do anything for myself, of myself. And the same is with us. 
but he did so many things, and we are praising God for that. The same will be with us, with us even greater, he said himself. To unite his life with our life, to accept his life. We cannot speak about obedience. Brother, we have to uplift the standards. We have to keep the commandments. Look, the coming of the Lord is soon, and everything is true. How? The Lord says, and it's solemn, and that's the root, that's the cause. It says, unless the mind of God becomes the mind of man, every effort to purify himself will be useless. And you can continue reading for yourself. That's impossible to change our reality. We may change the appearances. People, brethren, family, whatever, may think of us, oh, that's a nice, positive Christian. But the Lord will, will weep for me, saying no. And if I'm choosing only like that, only the appearances to do, brother, what do we have to do? What are you complicating so much? That's too much uh, philosophy, brother. What do we have to do? Give me the list of the commandments, and I will do it. As Peter, we were remembered this morning, was trying to do with his life, and we know the result. And the same, we are repeating every day. It's not about what we do. It's about how we are transformed, receiving his mind and his heart. And then, yes, it's about what is fru fruiting. How do you say? It's the, the fruits of that. Yeah? Walking with God, the fruits of his life. Yeah? The obedience, it's only a small thing. But the benevolence, the altruism, the living for others, the life of God on earth, that should be the reality. Is it possible? Let's take in a few moments the example of the past. I'm so thankful to the Lord that that's the wonderful Adventist, I think that the first Adventist, that he was waiting for the Lord to come to him and the angels and the Lord told him that his, the Lord's coming will not be in his time. And still, he was interested of that coming of Christ. He was, look, he walked with God, says the Bible. How did he walk with God? He educated his mind. It's coming back. Religion is about other thinking. I cannot change my thoughts. I may try to change exteriorly something, but it's only him changing. He educated by the Holy Spirit his mind to understand, to feel that he was in the presence of God. And when he was in perplexities, his prayers would accept, ascend to God to keep him continuing. He would pray, teach me thy way, O God, that I may not err. What is thy pleasure concerning me? What shall I do to honor thee, my God? Tuning up, yeah, tuning his heart, trying to, to grasp this soft voice of God. God is never yielding to his beloved ones. He may, yeah, sometimes in Sinai, he, he may, Sinai, he may just terrible do it, but it's not him. It's the soft voice. And Enoch was trying to, to, to clarify that, that uh, uh, receiver that he had to, to tune up with God. What, what's your will? What should I do now? I don't want to to uh, harm your, your heart, to wound you, your heart. Teach me, O oh Lord. That was the way, and he walked with God. In perplexities, I was, uh, yeah, reading as a child this verse. You did the same. The, the Enoch walk with God. I was thinking that there's no perplexities, that everything is clear for him. No, brethren, it's not clear. The Lord, let your heart to seek him. He's coming closer sometimes, or he is coming, yeah, next to you, but hidden. You don't feel, you don't see him. So that you may decidedly seek for his presence. There was experience of the wonderful patriarch. Yeah. Thus, he was consciously shaping his way and course in accordance with God's commandments. 
every day. For 300 years, Enoch had been seeking purity of soul, that he might be in harmony with heaven. For three centuries, he walked with God day by day. He had longed for a closer union, nearer and nearer, and uh, had grown the communion with his father until the Lord took him there. Nearer, closer and closer, that somehow he become closer with the gate of heaven than with the gate of his tent. He was walking here on earth, but he was living up there in heaven. And he was shining on earth, the life of heaven. He was closer and closer. That's the promise, brethren. What will take with us from this conference? I was sitting there on a chair, thinking with myself. That was nice with the brethren, with the delegates. We spent so nice. The, the singers, the players, so nice praising the Lord of, uh, yeah, with their songs. But when we leave, what will take with us? What will be your life? What will be my life? It can be like this. That tomorrow, it's already started. Christ in all, in all, in the future, it's already in the present, if you choose for yourself, if I'm choosing for myself. That's no other way around. Day by day, closer and closer. He had stood at the threshold of the eternal world, only one or a step between him and the land of the blessed. And now the portals opened. The walk with God, so long pursued on earth, continued, and he passed that step through the gates in the holy city. And then, what about the beyond the gates? Apostle Paul says that it's beyond our imagination. The tabernacle of God with people, with Enoch, with the angels, with welcoming him, the first from humans, as a promise that you can make it to through the same grace of God, not by obedience, by grace to or toward obedience. The obedience, it's only a nice secondary fruit and will be perfect but it's not counting for salvation. It's having him, having his mind. After the gates, inside, it's everything Christ. It says, heaven will be empty without the beloved Lord there. And beside him, yeah, everything that he prepared for us, things that I cannot see, hear, not heard, neither have entered into the heart of man. The philosopher, the great mind called Apostle P Paul, saw those things and was supposed to write them for us. And he put the pen down and said, no, it's not to be said in Jewish language. It's only for you and for me. If we accept, brethren, to delay on the threshold of its amazing grace of God, the book you may read for yourself, to delay on that threshold, and to be with the Lord even from now. The great controversy is ended. Sin and sinners are no more. The entire universe, it's clean. One pulse of harmony and gladness beats to the vast reality of God. There, the greatest enterprises may carry it forward. The loftiest appreciation, uh, aspiration reached. The highest ambition realized. And still there's new heights to surmount, new wonders to admire, new truths to comprehend, new things to discover, new aspects of God's love. And the eternity will be short, but it's good that's never ending. Thank the Lord for him, for, for this grace that he gave us, for him who created all, 
flow life and life and gladness. Christ in all, from him reflecting in all millions and millions of redeemed people and the angels and the other worlds. Yeah, my mind, it's too small to imagine from the minute's atom to the greatest world, all things, animate and inanimate, they'll say, God is love. They'll have him inside them, and the joy will be complete, will be total, perfect. Yeah, this is brethren. May the Lord help us to accept him as the only hope of glory, to accept him inside our hearts, and to do it now. Would you like to? Tell the Lord, please, now, your answer. I'm praying to do the same with my own heart. May the Lord bless us all to start the eternity from now. Amen.